in controversy as something that affects their, their day, w daily life and not so much as a scientific issue. Uh, but But well, well no, I agree. Let, let me let me turn it around, and maybe you can comment afterwards. But um, you know, obviously, I think we should, science, and that's what's really important. And I've used lots of examples, and I won't. In fact, there's one example I used in the dialogue with Richard that I won't repeat here about uh, the Big Bang as as being a scientific issue and not a social one. But uh, at the same time, let me put it around the other way and say I'm worried that more people don't know that science that at some basic literacy in science is vitally important for social issues. And the example I want to use, and, and the reason when I wrote my uh, piece in the Wall Street Journal a while ago uh, calling for a science debate was when Mr. Huckabee at the time, as you'll remember during the debates, all of you know that he was one of three people who said, I don't believe in evolution. But what was more upsetting to me was the statement that he made in the next debate, which was, I'm running for president. I'm not running to write an eighth grade science curriculum. So why should it matter whether I know the Earth is 6,000 years old or not? Okay? And what really upset me was not that statement, but the fact that a poll the next day of the American public, everyone agreed with him. I mean, a majority of the American public agreed with him. And the thought to me that you could be scientifically illiterate and yet be prepared to tackle the problems of, of this country, we wouldn't accept someone who didn't know the Holocaust happened, for example, or didn't know enough history to know that, that anything about that as being having enough perspective to make rational decisions, yet we're perfectly comfortable with people proclaiming, not just admitting, but pro proudly proclaiming their scientific literacy and yet allowing them to make vitally important issues, uh, uh, judgments on social issues. So I don't want a scientist president. It, it, it's not just a matter but of needing science in order to make judgments of, of things that, that where, where science is, is, is relevant, because of course science is relevant all the time. It's that somebody who is going through life on this planet without having a comprehension of why he's here, how he comes to be here, what the planet is, what the universe is. I mean, how can you live your life in ignorance of the world in which you live and expect to be a full human being capable of governing other full human beings? It isn't just that a, scientific igno a scientifically ignorant president will make wrong decisions about issues such as global warming or abortion or something like that. It's, it's more that you wouldn't wish to, to be governed by somebody who, I don't know, thought he lived on a flat earth uh, or um, had, had, was just a completely divorced from reality in that, that kind of way. It's an indication that this man is thick. He's stupid. Are you talking about anyone in particular? Uh, no. I, I, no. Uh, but, but let me... Let me just say also, uh, to add to that, it's, it's, it's more than that. It, it's not only a tragedy, it's criminal, uh, that th these are the most interesting, among the most interesting and fascinating intellectual achievements. Again, forget the practicality, the ideas that yeah. science has exposed. And it's just criminal and sad to think no more than w would we want to have a child grow up without having some understanding, of, some exposure to them then we would want a child to not, never be exposed to Shakespeare. Exactly. One of the stupidest things Sherlock Holmes ever said was the first, more or less, the first thing he said to Dr. Watson. Um, he, he divulged in conversation with Watson that Holmes didn't know something about the names of the planets and Jupiter and Saturn and th things like that. And Watson was absolutely shocked, and rightly so. And Holmes said, but Watson... I don't need to know about the planets in order to solve my criminal cases. That is such a short-sighted view. It's, it's, well, Conan Doyle was, uh, as you know, believed in fairies, so... so. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I think, I mean, that, for me, that comes back to what I said before. Before someone will listen to you, you have to get them to be interested. And I think the big problem, or well, it's, it's, maybe it's not a problem, but the, for many people, they just don't find the questions interesting. And I think, if I thought the questions weren't interesting, I wouldn't be doing it. But what, what I found is if you find the right way to, to seduce someone into being interested in those things, then, then, they, then, then the well opens up and it's just a, it's just a, a, a sea of questions. Because, we, because they are basic issues. Where do we come from? Where are we going? Are we alone in the universe? What are we made of? And so I think one has to find, one has to just overcome the tragic de-education that we do in this country. And here's, some, here's a scary statistic. So we compare American students to uh, their counterparts in 20, 25 other industrialized nations. And, and there was a recent study that you may have heard came, came out. So we look at, at kids in grade 3 and, and grade 5 and then, and then 15 year olds. And what's amazing is in grade 3 and grade 5, American students on the whole do better in science and mathematics than their counterparts around the world. But by the time they're 15, they do substantially worse. So we've been doing something very effective to de-educate them or de de disinterest them in science. And one of the reasons is another equally scary fact, which is that over 90% of middle school science teachers in this country have never taken a science course outside of high school. And what, what percentage was Over that? 90 percent. Ninety? Ninety, no, yeah. Not nine. No, ninety. And that, and that mean, and I saw it happen to our daughter when she was in school. In grade two, I remember going into her school, you know, and, and, and I mean, what do you do? In grade two, it's like it's light during the day, dark at night. I mean, those are the kind of things you're talking about. And, and, uh, and, and but the teacher was terrified. And that could not help but, but get across to the students that it was scary, it was terrifying, it was complex. And so it is, a, I think, a problem that we convince our students partly because we have people uh, teaching who don't feel comfortable with it, that they should feel uncomfortable and, uh, and interested. And you, know, for, and, and you can do very well. I taught at, at Yale University for a, what seemed like an eternity. And, uh, uh, um, and, I, and I learned that, that, you know, you can, that you can be, um, become, be very successful in this world with not only just being scientifically literate, but pro proudly proclaiming it. And, and, um, and it's unfortunate, it really is. Well, they would, they would deny that, actually, yeah. because they... Everything in modern medicine comes out of evolution. Can they show one development which has been made without evolution, without the bedrock of evolution? I mean, they should uh, read the Bible instead of going to the hospital. <laughs> and obviously, I'm very sympathetic to that. Um, there's a, there was, a, there was a, 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 a cartoon to that effect, uh, which was going the rounds of the, of the internet. Um, how did it go? It was, it, was, it, it was a fellow in a doctor's office and um, the doctor was warning him about um, antibiotic resistance uh, um, 